Brush strokes is found under the stylized category and I'll go ahead and apply it to this picture of the beach and zoom in nice and close so we can see what it's doing. So with the effect off, this is what it looks like with all these buildings on the beach. Turning back on kind of just breaks it up into a bunch of dabs of color. This is one of those effects that's kind of a novelty. It doesn't have too many practical applications, but let's walk through the controls and break down how it's working so you can really understand what it's actually doing. The first property I want to look at is the stroke length, and I'm going to turn that all the way down to one. And then I'll take the brush size and turn that up to its maximum of five, turn the stroke density all the way down to zero and stroke randomness all the way down to zero. And then finally, change the paint surface to paint on transparent. So now we're seeing through the image and I'm gonna turn my transparency grid off to show you how exactly this effect is working. It started by making a grid of all of these dots basically and they look to me like they're slightly elongated. So basically little ovals and all of their colors are based on the image below the effect. The brush size property determines how big those dots are. The stroke length determines how long each one of those ovals gets stretched out to be and those can overlap. The stroke density makes more of those dots appear in the same amount of space, so they're not actually getting smaller, there's just more of them filling in that grid. And the stroke randomness basically works like a scatter, it offsets each one of those samples off of that fixed grid. Then we have the paint surface which allows us to paint on top of the original image, so we're seeing that image underneath those swatches, or we could paint it on top of white, or on top of black. And then finally we have blend with original, which just fades back into the unaffected image. Now let's reset the effect back to its default and take a look at how all of these things combined can create somewhat of a brush stroke effect. Because it's pulling all of the color samples into that grid of those lines that are all overlapping and being randomized, it has a fairly convincing effect that it's been painted with a brush that has some texture to it. And using these controls, we can really shape how we want this to look. It is, however, going to affect everything uniformly. So I could change the stroke angle to something different than 135. That does seem to be a pretty natural looking angle for paintbrush strokes. If I were to set this to zero, then they're all gonna be pointing up and that doesn't necessarily look all that natural. I think having a little bit of a random rotation would be able to help this, but that's not an option with this effect. I think increasing the brush size does help a little bit because this effect was probably introduced before HD was the standard resolution. And so bumping it up to maybe 3.5 makes it a little bit more obvious what's happening. The stroke density, if I turn that down, is going to make these brush strokes a lot more apparent and not necessarily as convincing, but cranking it higher will take longer to render. And then the stroke randomness is basically going to just offset the position of all of those source dots on that fixed grid. So they're not quite as aligned and I can crank that up to two or turn it all the way down to zero so that they're perfectly aligned and then that kind of breaks the effect. So those are all of the controls. Let's take a look at what this would look like on top of say my logo with the green background. So I'll stick that behind the photo, turn on my background layer and then just make an adjustment layer layer, new adjustment layer, and add brush strokes to it and zoom in. And even on this text layer that I have, you can see how that's affecting it. It really has more of an effect when multiple colors are being blended into each other rather than just one color into another. This is pretty much just adding texture to the edge of my logo right now because of how simple this composition is. It's just flat vector colors on top of each other. And in this sense, the effect is actually working pretty well. It's giving it a nice textured edge. And again, you can play around with the brush size the stroke density, all these options to fine tune exactly how you want that texture to look. Now, if I jump back to my example with the photograph, I could maybe add a fast box blur before the brush strokes to just soften everything up a little bit, maybe just by one pixel even, and that's gonna give something that looks a little bit more smooth and I think a little more painterly than without it. It can just help soften everything up a bit. Whether or not you wanna use it is completely up to you but I hope that you at least now understand exactly how it's working so that you can try to fine tune it to do what you need it to. But that's brush strokes in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.